friends, neighbors, and of course, the YouTube comment section. Hello, welcome back. Oh man, I totally screwed this up. I should have said, hey, cool cats and kittens. There, we're gonna keep that edit in and call this, hey, cool cats and kittens. We're talking about cat cables today. You guys come here for the, the jokes, right? All right, so. I made a video a couple weeks ago and someone suggested that I checked out Belden's 1303E audio grade uh, cat cable. Um, so I grabbed a reel. I had to buy a thousand feet of it, <laughs> but I have it. <laughs> so see, just in case you guys are curious if I read the comment section or not, I totally do. And if you, if you would like to uh, either ask me a question uh, that I can answer on air with the uh, not so popular at this point segment called Ask Billy. You can email me at billy at billylaguardia.com. Um, or if you would have a question about something, you can always just uh, leave a comment in the build section or the comment section and I'll answer it. And if it's uh, about a piece of gear and I can probably use it either at LM or at my own, my own personal life, I'll, I'll grab it. So the um, audio grade cat cable. This is an interesting debate. I, uh, I feel like uh, if you've been watching these videos for a while, you saw me go pretty hard on the uh, Sound Tools cat cable um, with uh, just working on my own audio console, um, my M32 console going between the stage and the, um, the front of house console. There was a lot of limitations and stuff. But uh, this, this video is specifically about the construction of cable. So um, I keep three shielded cat lines in stock now <laughs> um, at LM. They're all Belden brand cables. So the white cable is um, Belden 1624P, which is a Cat6 shielded cable. Um, the cable that we used most often for the longest time is the 7953A Data Tough cable. Um, and this is the cat line that we sell on our web store. Um, we, we have it in, in two different flavors or I should say three different flavors. There's a uh, Ethercon to Ethercon, there's an Ethercon to RJ45, and then there's an RJ45 to RJ45. Um, and this is what I spec in most situations. So if you are buying an integrated system from us um, and, it, and you would like a data line with it, this is what we build it out of. Um, it's really great cable, it's super, super durable. The only problem with 7953 Data Tough is it wraps horribly. There, there really just isn't a good way to wrap this cable. It has a lot of memory in it, and it's really difficult, which brings me to the Sound Tools cable. Um, I did a video maybe two years ago um, comparing the difference between the Data Tough cable and the Sound Tools cable. Um, again, I, I don't have any line on, on the Sound Tools stuff. I, I, I buy it uh, from, from Dave at, at retail price. Um, I'm a huge Dave fan. I love, I love watching Dave Rat videos. He is um, one of the reasons why I started making YouTube videos myself. I really respect him as an engineer and I love watching all his, his technical videos. So uh, shout out to Dave. I'd love to meet him one day. Um, but anyway, Dave's cable wraps the best. Uh, this is like neoprene jacketing. It wraps just like a mic cable. Um, it's, it, it really is my favorite in terms of, of, of wrapping. All of my personal cables uh, that I make are made out of this, uh, or I use for my own personal audio adventures are made out of this. And because I had to cut about 100 feet off of my um, sound tools reel to make it behave with my Midas console, I have uh, tons of extra of this. So, um, which leads me to the Belden 1303E audio grade cable. Um, so this is the same thickness as Data Tough. Um, it is thicker than the rat cable. Um, you do have multiple layers of, of jacketing in here, so enough of me yakking. Let's cut it open. So with this, um, probably should have checked this off camera first. I may need to grab a uh, razor blade to actually strip this back. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. So this is nice, soft, flexible rubber coating on this. It comes with this, this little paper backing in here, which is kind of nice. We'll cut this off. And then there's an inner jacket that is also soft rubber. So let's leave this here. 
uh, let's cut apart the standard 1624p just as a control. So it does have shielding. It just came off when, when I stripped this. Um, let's do Dave's cable. This is the Sound Tools cable. This is braided just like a uh, mic cable, star quad cable, and this is the uh, Data Tough 7953A. Okay, so the interjacketing on this is foil. Um, okay, let's take apart our foil. Get this all relatively the same. This is the Data Tough cable. Data stuff is expensive too. Like this stuff, our cost is like two two fifty a foot. It's it's really expensive stuff. I feel like if you're looking at our web store, lmcasesonline.com, you look at some of those tactical cat cables, and you look at yourself like, oh my god, why is this so expensive? <laughs> That's why this stuff's really expensive stuff. Um, so we'll cut this back. Now this is the only tricky thing about terminating data tough is this is a Klein spring loaded stripper. I kind of put a little bit of pressure off of it just so that it doesn't cut through the conductors so you get a nice clean break. Perhaps not. Maybe we'll just grip it and rip it on this. There we go. Um, these cables, oh, you have your little, little pull wire in here. Let's get that out of there. Uh, the data tough stuff is, is tricky to build. Um, these are twisted pairs and they're molded. So to strip this, you have to untwist these pairs and make them one singular pair like this and take a knife and rip this down the center and separate it and then put it into your A or B standard. So build difficulty on this guy is a little tricky. Um, going into Dave's cable, he's got braided shielding on the outside. And again, this, you can tell an audio guy did this. This builds just like a star quad cable, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so his inner jacket is, is rubber as well. So this one is not going to pull back very easy, is it? I may have to grab a kniff for this one. I'm going to grab a knife. Stand by. Okay, so Dave's cable comes apart like this. Got to give his little paper fabric-y guy a little cut out of there like that. Here's his pairs. These do separate pretty easy. So I will say that Dave's cable is 5E, uh, so the twists in the twisted pairs aren't as extreme. If you look at... Uh, if you look at the uh, data tough cable versus the um, the 5e, that that's really the difference between Cat 6 and, and, and Cat 5e. I mean, it's just how tightly how tightly the strands are twisted. That's the, the the main difference. Okay, and there's that guy. And here is our audio grade 1303e Belden cable. Okay, he's got braided shielding in there as well, and foil. So the cool thing about this cable is that all of the twisted pairs are in individual foil jacketing. And if memory serves me correctly, I think that Dave has an audio cable like that as well that you can get all the pairs in individual shielded jackets like this. Now here's the thing. This is what makes the Belden cable tricky. Um, <clears throat> I uh, haven't completed a cable yet with this. Um, but uh, well, we'll take our drain wire out of there. 
Uh, but, but here's what I've noticed from just pulling this cable apart when we first got it in. I'm finally getting around to making a video. I've had a thousand foot reel of this cable for the past two months and I finally am getting a second to tear it apart. Um, when you look at the colors on this, uh, there isn't a stripe indicator. So, I mean, I, I call them stripe. You might call it something else. But, you know, when you look at this, there's orange, orange stripe. This is orange and a white cable, and then also green and a white cable. So when you're building this, <clears throat> it is very difficult uh, to tell the pairs apart. So when you arrange the cables in an order to terminate them into an RJ45, that is something to keep in mind. And we will now check out our 1624p just as our control we have to open our little candy wrapper here and these are easy you guys wonder I know, I know that this has come up in the comments section before why do i keep a long pinky nail on a long thumbnail uh, it's just mostly for separating strands on data cable i did that without even thinking so larry you go it's you know it's true so there's your, your this is this is easy to build okay these three cables, you can terminate them all with a standard shielded RJ. Um, the shielded ones suck to build. There, there's no sugar coat in that. You have to put the little plastic guy in there, feed your cables into that, and then feed that whole assembly into, into the, the, the RJ shell. And then you wrap your shielded thing around there to make sure that you have ground to ground, shield to shield. Now, when you're dealing with audio, it is hugely important that you use a shielded cable because the way it works is that all of your pin ones, if you're using you know, XLR or TRS, tie together and that completes the ground. So you have hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold, and then this is pin one, it ties everything together. And that's how you get phantom power. Um, so if you are using a non-shielded cable, the first thing that's not gonna happen is, is phantom power. Um, these all terminate with regular, regular RJ45s. You know, what you're paying for, um, you know, Dave's wraps the best. Uh, the Belden ones, this this standard shielded stuff that we have, the white stuff, it's it's really difficult to wrap. It's very durable. It is a very, very durable cable. Um, I use it for a lot of internal things. So if we're going from a patch panel to a switch or something like that, and it needs to be shielded, uh, we'll, we'll run this as trunk line. Um, you know, the data, the data tough stuff is obviously the exterior. Um, it, you know, it has this little, little plus guy that keeps all the twisted pairs separate. Um, again, this, this cable rocks. If, if I was, uh, using this as a snake application to go from front of house, you know, to a console, you know, you can have a whole crowd of people stand and walk on this kind of stuff and it'll, it'll be fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that at all, but I still put it in a cable, you know, a cable tray. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's good stuff. If you had to gaff tape over this and let people walk over it, it would be fine. Now going to the audio grade Belden cable. You have to use an Ethercon um, and not the cable chassis Ethercon. You have to use the, um, oh God, I can't even remember it. It will be displayed here uh, below. Um, you have to use that one that, ha that you basically insert the cables into the little plastic pieces and then you smash it on a connector. Uh, check out the link. I've showed you how to build those before. Um, this will not fit in a standard RJ45. Um, I actually contacted Belden about this and said, do you have an RJ45 that you recommend? And they said, no, it has to be in an Ethercon. Um, but what I have found is that, uh, at least what I ordered, which I think will work, is there are toolless industrial grade RJ45s that will work with this, that basically they work in the same way that the, uh, the Neutrik ones do, where there is a PCB that makes pin contact with the RJ45 on the outside, and basically you're crimping cables into a, a little plastic piece. So if you're interested in the Belden 1303E audio grade cable, um, perhaps by the time you're watching this video, I will have figured out the build construction and you can check out the upper right hand corner and you can buy it from LM. Uh, if not, <laughs> you're uh, probably gonna have to do some experimentation and maybe just maybe if I figured it out, I've made a build video, which will possibly appear in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Uh, anyway, 
Hope that helps. Word of the wise, if you buy this, um, you, you have to, um, you can't use a regular RJ45. So, it, and the reason why, I'm sorry, I'm rambling too much, too much coffee today. Um, the reason why is these conductors are too thick. They're way thicker compared to, um, compared to uh, other, other cables. They just won't fit within the confines of a normal RJ45. So um, that's, that's what you gotta do. Anyway, sorry for the rambling, ranty video. Um, as always, I uh, appreciate you guys watching these things. Um, I know the production value is a little low most of the time because I'm usually in the middle of something. I just decided to throw up a camera and make a video. So uh, if you have any questions that I didn't cover in my over-caffeinated rant of these four cables, uh, please just leave me a comment below. Um, and uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll uh, catch you on the next one. See ya.